another example of um, an equation that I want to basically find all the details about this equation and graph, whatever graph corresponds to this equation. So I hope that you recognize it as the equation of an ellipse, and this is a standard form of the equation of an ellipse. So um, the center is at, what am I subtracting from x? I'm subtracting negative 1 from x. What am I subtracting from y? I'm subtracting 2 from y. So the x-coordinate of the center is the opposite of this, and the y-coordinate of the center is the opposite of this. Okay, so when you go back and forth between this form and the center, okay, you're always taking the opposite of these signs. Um, what else do I want to know? Is the major axis vertical or horizontal? Well, what is the largest denominator? The largest denominator is 9, correct? And with ellipses, the largest denominator represents a squared. And therefore, the other denominator is going to represent b squared. So, being that the largest denominator is underneath x, I'm going to say, and that's my a squared, the major axis is horizontal. a is equal to 3, and b is equal to 2. So, that means that the length of the major axis is a plus a, or twice a, which is 6, and the length of the minor axis is, sorry guys, b plus b, I'm just going to say minor axis like that, b plus b, or 2 plus 2, or twice b, or 4. What else do I want to determine? Um, let's find c. a squared minus b squared is c squared. So 9 minus 4 is c squared. So c is the square root of 5. This just so happens, okay, it doesn't always um, happen this way, but in my last example is the square root of 5 also. So that's just a coincidence. And that's going to help me determine my foci, okay, the location of my foci. I might want to know, you know, what my vertices are, okay, what my co-vertices are, okay, um, and where my, the ordered pairs that represent my foci. So let's, I want to find all this out. And then I also want to graph it. You know, what helps you determine some of these ordered pairs is to first graph the um, ellipse. So let's, let's do that. Let's graph the ellipse. So let's start with the center. Negative 1, 2. The center is at negative 1, 2. Here's my center. I'm going to call it C. From the center. So <laughs> I'm going to count A units to get to the vertices. But do I count up or down or left and right? Well, the major axis is horizontal. So I'm counting left and right. So I want to make sure that my egg is sitting on its side because the longest portion of the egg should be horizontal. So three units to the right and to the left from here. One, two, three. One, two, three. Vertex, vertex. So that's at two, two, and negative four, two. So my vertices, two, two, and negative four, two. I want you to notice that the y coordinate of the vertices are the same. The x-coordinates are the ones that change because it's a horizontal major axis, right? So the x-coordinates are going to change because we're moving left and right. And um, you can even look at it here and go negative 1 plus 3 is 2, and negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. So, you know, all that stuff kind of fits. To get to my co-vertices, I want to count two units up and down now, right, for my minor axis. So 1, 2, up. CV covertex, 1, 2 down, CV covertex, right? So that goes 4, negative 1, I'm sorry, negative 1, 4, and negative 1, 0. So negative 1, 4, and negative 1, 0. Notice that the x coordinate stayed the same, and the y coordinate is the one that changed because the minor axis is vertical because the major axis is horizontal. And since I'm moving up and down, the y coordinate is affected by. 2. So 2 plus 2 is 4, 2 minus 2 is 0. So that matches. Um, let me graph the x, right? The foci. So the foci, they go along the um, horizontal because they're going along the major axis. So to the right and to the left, square root of 5 units, which is 2 point something. 1, 2, yeah, approximately, right? It's not going to be perfect because it's a decimal. And then 1, 2 to the left. So what is changing? My x or my y? To get from the center to, the fo to each focus, I'm counting to the left and to the right. So my x-coordinate is going to change. 
So I'm adding and subtracting the square root of 5 to the x-coordinate of the center. Adding and subtracting the square root of 5 to the x-coordinate of the center. The y-coordinate is not changing, right? Because I'm moving along the major axis. And now I can graph. And there's my beautiful x sitting on its side. And I have all the details that match what I wrote here.